Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 32 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show David and I are talking about the trend towards information technology being offered as a service such as cloud computing is a common example of outsourcing. What does Australia's expansion into cloud computing mean for the Australian IT economy? And make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips for expansion into cloud computing. Hey Dave, it's great to see you this week. Yeah, it's great to be here and it's uh, great to talk about this topic. I think it's very important, not only for Australia, but internationally. Uh, it truly is. It truly is. And, and the impacts and the ripple effects are massive when it comes to cloud computing and what's going on at the moment. So a nice question to open up the show for you, Dave, is uh, what does Australia expansion into cloud computing mean for the Australian IT economy? You know, it's funny. It's uh, looking at this and looking at the results of this uh, this survey and this article that we, we, we used to, uh, for the show. It, it kind of comes down to the fact that uh, if you're not into hardware or software, you're not selling things in the enterprise or within the data center, uh, you're okay. In fact, you're going to be more than okay. You're going to watch your economy boom around kind of the uh, leveraging of cloud-based resources and doing so on demand. So I, I think what's going to happen in Australia is going to happen in lots of places. And, and actually in the United States, we're going to see some downturn as well as in China as well in terms of hardware and software production. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's going to streamline the way in which we do IT. We're no longer dependent on hardware and software resources, which is bad news for the people who produce hardware and software, you know, the IBMs of the world and the Oracles and things like that. But good news for people who are actually trying to get things done and solve problems. And so that's where it's leading us now. And I think Australia is kind of in the catbird seat because guess what? They don't have a tremendous dependence on hardware and software production. Uh, for the data centers. And so they're in essence able to reinvent themselves in the cloud much easier than the larger countries out there, European, you know, European countries, the United States, uh, you know, China, you know, those sorts of guys. It's going to be very difficult for them to reinvent themselves into kind of the cloud computing economy where Australia is kind of able to shift, you know, shuck and drive and move pretty quick. I mean, we talked yesterday, uh, excuse me, we talked in our last show about IBM selling, you know, $750 million of cloud computing services and hardware and software into Australia. And that's really just kind of the changing, you know, uh, metrics and the fact that Australia is really coming on the dime and getting, getting, getting alive with cloud computing. I think IT is going to basically adopt to the changes and we're just going to see a boom in the economy in Australia based on the fact we're going to be able to do more with less and be able to punch way above our weight. Yeah, it really is a big deal, this IBM move with the government, and uh, it will be certainly, we think, we, like you say, we discussed it last week, it'll be very interesting to see how that contract pans out with regards to uh, keeping up with uh, the, the movement of technology as a hardware point of view, because uh, like you've actually pointed out, your feelings on this contract is that there's going to be a hell of a lot of hardware being sold into the government, so that'll be a very interesting one to watch, won't it? Yeah, it will be. And, and really, we're going to have to accept that things are going to be changing, you know, going forward. Where it was kind of a denial thing 10 years ago when I first got into cloud computing, was talking to lots of people, you know, and getting doors slammed in my face. Um, we're seeing weaknesses in the hardware and software production area. And I think we're going to see more weaknesses going forward, with the exception of some of the uh, manufacturers out there that are supporting the cloud businesses. And I think that's going to continue going forward. So let's find something else to do with those resources. And the reality is, like, I think it was kind of a waste of time and money, you know, to sit down and try to keep up with every iteration of hardware and software going forward versus, you know, outsourcing the whole thing and letting other people worry about it. And so the great thing about leveraging Amazon or Alibaba or Google or Microsoft to, you know, uh, support your infrastructure is the fact that they're going to be concerned about updating the hardware and software and the platforms, the security, things like that, or we're not going to do business with them. And we're making it their problem. And I love that because if it's your problem, it takes a tremendous amount of minutia and a tremendous amount of detail uh, to get keep those things running. And you ask any CIO you know, out there where they spend their time and money is keeping the networks, the hardware and software running, keeping things maintained, keeping the security up to date, you know, playing whack-a-mole with the hacking attempts and things like that. Let's just give it to somebody else and let's put, you know, quality of delivery into a domain and let's leave it with the experts who are able to keep keep track of that 
And as an enterprise, I don't want to do that. I'm not in the technology business of unselling tires. I'm not in the technology building business of unbuilding airplanes. I want other people to basically support me there. Yeah, it's so true. And, and really, the heavy lifting should be done by, and that's one of the beautiful things about cloud, is organizations of any size or scalability and, and flexibility, the cloud offers them so much and, and, and gives them value for money as well. So, you know, give all the, the bulk of the, the back end of the IT department to the, the heavy lifters, you know, the, the people that have already got the, the data centers, that have got the technologies that, that have to be updated, you know, just because they have to be updated, because that's what they're paid to do. So it, it really baffles me, and I think it's baffled a few people on, I've seen on Twitter and, and Instagram and Facebook, people commenting about why has the Australian government spent one billion Australian dollars with IBM for hardware? This makes no sense at all. So if anyone from IBM out there that wants to come on the show to talk about this or, or the Australian government, let's get this viral, folks. Let's get them on the show. Let's, let's do something with the, the, the cloud computing world and find out why they've done this. It would be really interesting to find out why because, you know, the figures just don't stack up and if we look at the figures that are coming out at the moment from people like Gartner uh, and, and various other market research companies, the Australian cloud computing service market is set to hit around 4.6 billion uh, Australian dollars this year um, with the bulk of the Australian public uh, cl cloud services which is, is around the SaaS marketplace. So this really isn't making a huge amount of sense for the Australian government to do that. So we want them to come on board Dave, what do you think and uh, talk about this? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's important. I mean, uh, you know, the um, you know, shame on them. It's not necessarily an issue with IBM or anybody else who's selling hardware or software. You know, it's an issue with people who are consuming the hardware and software. You know, going forward. And so, if there's a demand, there's somebody out. There's somebody who's going to supply the demand. That's just kind of the way it goes. And so, governments have to think differently. And I think, you know, we're into the United States government here, and and they're not getting very close to cloud computing either. And if you look at the Canadian government, they're moving faster because it's a smaller country, and some of the other European countries are moving faster as well. So, you know, I view if they're doing, you know, a bit more than than nothing, uh, you know, they're probably ahead of uh, the other governments out there that I'm seeing in the space. In other words, they have intentions and they have plans in place. And, uh, you know, guys like me are waiting, you know, chomping at the bit to help them. Um, but uh, unless you're willing to go forward, fund it, make things happen, outsource applications, move things, deal with security, deal with governance and deal with the hard stuff, deal with the heavy lifting, it's going to be very difficult to do it. And the problem is governments, you know, are limited by budgets and budgets are limited by taxpayers and unless they're willing to allocate different budgetary li limitations and release the limitations, they're not going to be able to do much any time soon. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A hundred billion uh, Australian uh, dollars of taxpayers' money actually on hardware. They could potentially be out of date very quickly. So uh, yeah, it comes out of our pocket at the end of the day, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And I, I just want to say right here that uh, you and I will fix their problem for 1% of that. We will do it for 1%. So uh, at the end of the, it will make them much more efficient. We'll only take 1% of a hundred billion dollars. Yeah, I've just, I've just realized, I said 100 billion, so, and, and I, I, I'm going to have to reframe that and say that, it's, sorry folks, it's 1 billion of Australian dollars uh, in, in, oh, in taxpayers' money. Well, so. I, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, roll over in bed for 1% of a billion dollars, man, so I don't know about you. You know, I, I just want to clear up, just clarify, it was one billion Australian dollars taxpayers' money that, they, that we think, we're, we're, we're sort of, uh, you know, uh, assuming, as it were, uh, that they're buying hardware for that. So we just need to make that clear. And I mean, there's a really interesting figure actually around the, the global um, uh, cloud services market as well, of the, the, the figure that, that's going to be hit, uh, I think, by the end of this year, which is, you know, 186.4 billion US dollars. So, you know, I mean, if you're going to follow a market trend of how much money's being spent into cloud, maybe government needs to, you know, needs to keep up on how that market trend's going. What do you think? Just for the basis of saving money for the government and saving the taxpayers money. I think that's one of the, the main things. I mean, if you want to be in the interest of the, the community, look at where else you can invest, you know, a lot of that money you're going to waste on hardware into schools, educations, hospitals, that sort of thing, health tech, you know, that sort of thing, rather than, you know buying systems that potentially will be out of date when you've got people like AWS that do all the heavy list lifting for the Pentagon <laughs> already and things like that. So this is not making not making a huge amount of sense. Oh, this is a bit of a controversial show for us today, Dave, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's not really controversial. I think uh, even people within the government would probably agree with you, you know, in terms of their kind of moving forward and being much more effective and efficient with their money. 
the problem is they're just they're the global one here um, in all of the the countries that exist, and they end up consuming a lot of a lot of stuff. And but they have the most potential to become more effective and efficient. And so it's just difficult for them to move as fast as businesses out there. But they need to start moving fairly quickly. And so when you think about it, the move to PCs and distributed computing, when that started to occur back in the 80s and 90s, the government got into that very quickly. I was involved in that, you know, working for, for, for uh, government contractors. Now it's, uh, you know, movement into cloud, they don't seem to be moving as fast. And I, 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 I'm a little confused as to why, but I think it's a matter of budgetary money, funding, things like that, that really kind of limits them. So you have lots of people who are on board with what we're saying, they're willing to make a move, uh, they just don't have the money to make it happen. Yep, fair enough. It all comes down to money at the end of the day. But look, this moves us on nicely to your top three tips for this week, Dave. So what are your top three tips for an organization and the expansion into cloud computing? Yeah, leverage cloud only where needed. So the reason I'm kind of saying that we're at a cloud computing show and telling people to, to take a look at where they're leveraging cloud, um, you do see a lot of misappropriation and misapplication of cloud-based technology. And so we're going to hit a saturation point somewhere between 70%, 80% of the workloads out there where it doesn't make sense to move 20 to 30% because it's uneconomically viable for us to move them. And so make sure you're moving the right workloads into the cloud at the right time uh, to make them work correctly. W watch out for the meta trends. I mean, one of the things that we're really having this discussion now and being a little hard on the government of Australia as well as other governments is the fact that they missed the meta trend. They didn't see this coming. And the reality is that you can play Manage My Magazine and Chase the Shiny Objects, but it's really a matter of looking seriously at some of the trends that are coming down the line as to which ones you can apply to add value within your organization. Cloud computing was a meta trend. It was coming for 10 years. And so you had ample you know, opportunity to retool, retrain, reskill and to get in that space. And now people are playing catch up football, which not soccer, actually real football. So it's a US term. Uh, also watch out for the micro trends. And so we have IoT, we have machine learning, we have blockchain, you know, we have all these various, you know, kind of cool shiny things that are coming up. Some of those things are, are really not gonna have as much value as others, but we need to start placing bets in those areas. Great top three tips there, Dave. Love it. As always, thanks for being part of the Australia show this week. It's always a pleasure, man. Greetings. I hope, hope you guys have a good time uh, down under. Absolutely. Don't fall off the planet. Don't fall off the planet. No, it's a bit chilly down here at the moment this time of year, but hey, we'll get over it. Excellent. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. And remember to share this with your friends and colleagues as well, as they might find this interesting. They might also know people in the government or IBM that would be interesting, uh, interested in finding out more about the shows and maybe coming on the show so we can interview them about what they're up to and all the exciting things and how they're embracing cloud and uh, or, or as they're not embracing cloud, as the case may well be, with, uh, with all the hardware systems they're buying. So you can get David on Twitter. Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. I think you'll find there's some blue uh, little graphics there that you can, uh, you can see there so you can find us on Twitter. So thanks for watching and until next week.